Hello. We are now. Hello. Hello, Glenn. How's it going? Good. Did you get your parcel yet? Get my what? Your parcel. Oh no, I didn't get it yet. I didn't get it. Uh, when when did you get it? I sent it out yesterday. Oh, it should take. It probably probably be here Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Something like that. Um, you can't you can't like that. None of that money can go to you. Money is for the institute, and it pays for the papers, and the papers then pay for running the farm, the experiments that we're doing by raising animals. So in the end, mm-hmm. the money ends up as chicken feed, goat feed, hay, and uh, uh, straw. Oh, okay. All right, I, 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 cause, cause I heard, I think I heard you mention that the money, anything over a certain amount, like it, it can't go to you directly. It all goes uh, either in if it's a a small amount, it goes into petty cash if mm-hmm. we have no petty cash, mm-hmm. and if it's a larger amount, it goes to the bank. Usually, a hundred dollars goes to the bank first. But if we have no petty cash and we need to buy something uh, for the animals, uh, feed or whatever, then it goes on that. Yeah, so I'm, the dots are connecting more and more every day for me. Well, that's what we hope for. Yeah. yeah. Once you have the premise mm-hmm. and you start doing your homework, Yeah. So been we had, uh, I had one guy from, uh, I don't know if you know him, his name is Vic. Oh, Vic. I know Vic. Yeah. Uh, he kept uh, writing to me, writing to me, uh, and obviously never doing any search on his own in the yeah, yeah. file. And, and I told him day before yesterday, I said, you know, I'm not here to repeat what I've written every day for the last <laughs> five, seven years. Mm-hmm. It's up to you to take what I send out or go to the archives and look up stuff. And if you have questions on the things in the archives, then you ask. Yeah. But this thing of calling three, four times a day to ask me the simplest thing, <laughs> said, that can't happen anymore. Yeah, but, uh, I- I know he tends to do that. So he calls calls me up yesterday again, and he says, um, "I want you to speak to my grandmother and tell her that it's okay." He says they're putting me in jail for a, an altercation I had with my dad, and I want you to tell her it's okay that uh, uh, I can call you Colette from jail. I said, "What are you talking about? You not okay." <laughs> wow! Who, can't who do you think I am, Mister <laughs> Moneybag? <laughs> oh man! Wow! <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he put me on the phone before with his um yeah. his grandfather and asked me to talk to him and try to convince him, but you know I you know I can't make convince the guy. You know, but. Yeah. but yeah, but, um, when I was researching uh. Your stuff. I, I came across the post you said uh you mentioned um uh Emmanuel Velikovsky and he has a he has a you say he has a book. I actually ran across a website that has all of his uh work archived. Right. Yeah. But um I was talking to a friend, he told me, I don't know how you know, how true it is, um he said that like uh, a bunch of scholars got together and debunked uh, well, it's the same thing with everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, people debunk me because I won't give them titles of books. Mm-hmm. Uh, because when I did, they mm-hmm. disappeared from the the book list. You couldn't buy them anymore. Yeah. Canada bans the books that I mention. So yeah, they can't seen even that, be too. imported into the country. Mm-hmm. So the, they're the other team, you know. Mm-hmm. And you have oh, okay. to accept they're out there. Yeah. yeah. And they don't want you to learn anything, so they're going to 
attack. And since they have nothing to attack on, they uh, they attack people who basically tell the truth. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna read that book. But um, yeah, I'm seeing that this 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 path, this journey I'm on is gonna. I read them. I don't read online though, cause I, I, cause I was doing that anyway. Like I spent a lot of money on buying books and yeah. trying to get to it. Like this the only one. way you can learn, you have your own experiences and you do your own work, and from the stuff you read, mm-hmm. you get hints at looking up things you may not have thought about. Yeah. Like one thing I looked up that you said um, when you mentioned. Uh, you quoted uh so it said disinterested warnings of a parting friend who can possibly have no personal motive to bias his counsel. The hour of departure has arrived and we go our ways. I die I to die and you to live, which is better. Hindu, Persia, Skull and Bone Society only knows. And then you said Washington, Socrates and Gabran. And I looked up Gabran and it's pretty interesting. He he's actually trained by like Ecclesiastical, like a Maronite priest, yeah. and uh, and then I think he helped like the New Age movement and, uh, and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, and then, and then in the next paragraph, you talk about Mizpah of Gilead or Gili, Gilead, and in there you said Miz, and I read that quote in the Bible, verse uh, chapter thirty-one, and it says Miss P ritual. Miss Pa and I looked up that Miss Pa ritual and it goes back to uh cult in Mesopotamia. Sure. And uh, I couldn't I, I, I couldn't find anything more. I have to like I have to buy this book. I, I don't know if I should buy it or not. It's like $116. It explains it a little bit more, but uh, I I have that here, I think. Oh, you bought it. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'm I guess I'll I will buy it. But um yeah, like so when rocks on like when when they put the rocks on top of each other in that in that passage in the Bible, that was supposed that's like a, an agreement. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's a contract. Oh. They usually put it uh, halfway between uh, the contractors, <laughs> the mm. people who are in on the contract, mm. on their properties. You know, they yeah. put it halfway in between. To remind each other that they have a contract. Oh. Is there anything related to like, what, like Stonehenge or something? Or? Well, it, it that it's mostly cairns mm-hmm. uh, that the Vikings built, mm-hmm. and of course you have uh, the contract of Jerusalem with uh, the temple underneath and the dome of the rock on top. Mm-hmm. You know the the fights between Hamas and and Israelis is is a put on. It's like every other one. It's a family feud. Yeah. Hamas, if the, you look at it, it's the word ami, a m i s, mm-hmm. friends. Yeah. The friends on the. There, it's all of the uh, Semite tribes, mm-hmm. Those each seven have families. a job to do, mm-hmm. and one of the jobs is to uh, create uh, tension in the Middle East, because that's where the final war is supposed to be fought. Mm-hmm. So, But if you're, if you're paying attention to the news these days, it won't be long before there is going to be nuclear activity in the Middle East. There's um, uh, 17,000 more Americans going to Afghanistan right now. There is uh, a request from NATO for all the NATO troops to be brought to Afghanistan. There is uh, uh, Chinese, Japanese, and uh, French ships being sent to the Gulf on the pretext of fighting Somalian pirates. There is a 10-ship flotilla left England a week or two ago on its way to the Red Sea. So don't be surprised if 
on a night this summer, the longest evening of the year, or a midsummer night's dream, that you're going to hear about nuclear activity in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. All of these attacks by terrorists, mm-hmm. Pakistan, India, and everything, they're to basically justify mm-hmm. what is about to happen. Yep. Any any war by a superpower against uh, terrorists door to door is stupid. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a waste of lives. The only way you shut down terrorists is go to their training headquarters and uh, annihilate the place so that there is a price for them to pay. That's what they did in Japan at the end of World War II when Japan sent out kamikaze bombers One one plane at a time would be attacking a ship and hitting the ship like a bomb. So in the end, there was only one answer, two nuclear bombs. Yeah, they've done this before in history. They always do, like, I learned, you know, like Robin Hood was a perfect example. You know, him and, you know, him and the king were like the same lodge together, and yeah. He would rob people, and, the, and that was just an excuse to tax the people. And sure. So this is like a, a rerun to me. Yeah. One big rerun. Abel and Cain. Oh. Abel <laughs> is the uh, the the guy who basically plays it cool behind the scene. You don't see him, mm-hmm. but everybody honors Abel. That's yeah. why in court. Honorable, yeah. honorable so and so. So he's a good guy. The builder, mm. Cain's the mason. Cain's the builder. Mm. So it's like the dialect. That's like the whole dialectic, right yeah. there. Uh, it's all based on really those two, I guess. Yeah. And here you'd have to say clan mothers and Neanderthalers are working together. Hmm. Mm. Except the clan mother may not have had any choice in the matter at the beginning, but the uh, symbolism is medulla, Medusa, the Mm -hmm. goddess of North Africa, who begat the Amazons, the women without breasts, were men, Mm -hmm. the men with breasts were women. Mm. And you know it's very interesting uh, from reading. Like, I get led to like st- looking at the animal, the different animals in the animal yeah. kingdom, and I seen I, there was something called it's called dimorphism, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the difference between uh, people of the same species or the same species, like the genders between the same species. And one, um, actually two different. Uh, one was a worm. I think you pronounce it Asidax, and it's, it eats, it feeds off uh, uh, the whale, whale bones, and mm-hmm. and it's a female worm that has a male that doesn't grow past the larvae stage, and and the, the male lives inside, and all it does is provide sperm, and then you have uh, the anglerfish, and it has, and the male of that species is like a little tiny parasite that lives off the like. The, the the back end of the anglerfish, and I guess that's where they got the um, idea of uh, you know with the perfect slave, you know, with the test the male inside. Yeah. So I guess I understand that concept, but uh, yeah, and it's pretty. Uh, and, and and I see that like how the males are in these species. I I, I that that like and that brings me back to like the human species, like basically men they just hit a support the woman. Yeah. And like a support structure. Yeah. And yet they they've been fooled into turning it around. Mhm. And now you have women doing chores yeah. in support of men and men 
becoming politicians and uh, long-term thinkers Mm -hmm. when they're not basically equipped for the job. Yeah. And, of course, the Japanese tell you about the the little guy in the neck by Mm -hmm. taking all of the plants, the trees, and miniaturizing them, taking bonsai trees taking women and making uh, geishas out of them. Mild manner during the day, wild like an animal at night. Uh Same word, mild and wild. Just flip the letter. Yeah, I've seen what you said. uh, You said something about... uh, People followed up when women following the program is seventeen security. Yeah. Men following their program is sex in the sandwich. So originally men weren't just sex in the sandwich. They were just I guess to support the support. Yeah. yeah, they were they were basically doing what they were built to do. Yeah. Hunt, fish, build cabins, you know. Mm-hmm. All of the kind of Things that were needed, mostly um, in in heavier labor, uh, lifting, that kind of stuff, running, jumping, yeah. climbing. The women were basically uh, gardening, waiting for the meat to be brought in. And, uh, Young girls taking care of the babies. Older women teaching boys about sex. Uh, Sounds like a a better time. (laughs) Yeah. It would be difficult to reverse the process. Not impossible but certainly not doable in a lifetime, in our lifetime. Four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, probably 200 years or so. Yeah. It's, but people are so far gone, like, just telling people, you know, marriage. Yeah, that's, that's why the uh, the system, now that they've brought us to this point, um, doesn't try to change us into a better slave. They choose to destroy us and start over. Yeah, like they destroy the family unit, but and so people are fighting. Yeah, people who are aware of certain things about the system, they're trying to fight that, yeah. but they don't realize, I guess, that the family structure is fake. Some parts of the world, they emphasize family. Mm-hmm. In other parts of the world, they emphasize the breakup of family. And I've heard, too, like the king and queen was actually like a model that the people were supposed to emulate down below. Yeah. But they were not. Except they had to work down below, and the king and queen waited for the stuff to be brought up to them. <laughs> and it's pretty... Yeah, some some of the kings too, when you look back in history, like King James, they really believed that they were divinely chosen. Like they were, yeah. like King James, he thought he was, <laughs> he was he was like chosen by God. Well, he was. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the he, <laughs> he knew he was. Uh. They, the the priests mm-hmm. don't like fighting. Because that's work. So the duty that they had when they were priests and in charge is they had to do the fighting. That's what knights were. Knights were, on the one hand, priests, and on the other hand, soldiers. Oh, yeah, yeah, the the priestly. The, yeah, I noticed that. Um, have you ever watched the movie Apocalypto? Apocalypto, I... Don't remember if I saw that. It's a uh, the name is familiar, of course, but 
it, it um Mel Gibson produced it. It's like uh like 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 South American people, like Mayans like and they uh, I think I've seen the commercials for it a number of times, but I don't think I've seen the movie. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, like they show you like uh uh they, almost like almost it wasn't really a clan. Like they show you how you know, like they had the priestly class who would <clears throat> Sacrifice people, and and they had yeah. the people fool with the whole stars and lunar eclipse, and yeah. and then they had another cast. Uh, they were part of the same cast, but like uh, I guess another order. But they were the masculine the ones that went out and hunted people to sac to uh to get right. to get sacrificed. So, it, it, I've heard like when I was reading um an Alan Watts book, he was saying that they it's actually a technique that they use when they uh, molest people and stuff they like turn them into these like i guess deviants and like well ge- genetics mm-hmm. is is an interesting study because mm-hmm. uh, a gene is designed to do something specific mm-hmm. but you can manipulate genes and change its actual task a laboratory that's called epigenetics. Story of genetics is basically what it means. E- the EPI basically means modifying an existing gene, not simply taking the basic genes that we had at first, but also modifying those genes. So if they saw a deviation come about from a gene and they noticed what had occurred in the gene, they could induce it to emphasize it more and bring it more down the line that they wanted. Mass murderers, you know, serial rapists, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's why um, when I was reading uh, uh, Morals and Dogma, um, he brought up like some Roman uh, dictators, and they were all related. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, uh, they all came from the same crypt. The two gangs that you have in Los Angeles are, are telling you the story: Crips and the Bloods. Yeah. So they're basically saying, "I come from a dead mummy, mm-hmm. or I come from a live mother." So the mummy produces the genes, and her offsprings then have four generations of the use of those genes, but then they, their effectiveness dies out, so you got to boost it with another mummy. And the word for mummy is crypt. In a crypt, you're dead. So is is uh, Crips and Blood also like a representation of Cain and Abel? Yeah, it, it tells you that they didn't invent their names. That yeah. they are a government department. Oh yeah, you look at the symbols. The symbols are so like occultic, and even the colors, you know, color, you know, usually red and blue. Yeah. Uh, from what I understood, like red was uh like a oh I'm sorry, like left brain, right brain. The hermaphrodite, or, or, but I've heard too that you know in in uh, like the color coding too that like red also means uh, revolution. Yeah, well the the blue uh, is from the original. Uh, that's why they call them blue bloods, mm. Neanderthalers, and and they are direct descendants, Roma, and the red are the Persians, that's the word Persian, because a P can be a D, P-E-R is really the word red, mm-hmm. from Asia. Yeah. So yeah. the red Asians as opposed to the yellow Asians. Yeah, and plus they have IRS in the name. So yeah. Part of this whole money. All of that, you know, is is linked to information passed down to them in books, these these uh, Neanderthalers, 
would prepare a book mm-hmm. and put somebody's name on it, like Ptolemy. You know. But there is no such person as Ptolemy. It was a coded version to say, you know, Ami, Franz, comes from us. Now you, um, you make copies and distribute it uh, within the monasteries, within certain monasteries. But to make certain that no one um, who was unauthorized, even the people who are doing the copying, would know the story, they were only given certain pages. Like one monastery for copying purposes might get page 1, 5, 9, 14, 82, mm-hmm. and another one would get something else. And and then they'd all send it in to the headquarters who would assemble the pages into the number of volumes that they wanted. All of that was, what was that, Sean Connery there? Uh, Oh, uh, the name of the road. The name of the road. Yeah, that that was hinted at in there. That's the work they were doing was copying books. Yeah, and and the word rose, of course, means ruse. Yeah, and I I noticed when you said Jerusalem, that's really interesting. How you said it was the first, second, and the third. The, I guess the Jew being Judaism and Ruse for resurrection, Christianity, and yeah. Alem, <laughs> Islam. Wow. That's, uh, I've never <laughs> seen that one. But A J, the letter J, mm-hmm. as you have in your name, yeah. is really a D in the cult. Mm-hmm. Write a J in, in your uh, mind's eye. Mm-hmm. And then do another one and turn it upside down, leading up, yeah, curving over. Mm-hmm. It makes the letter D. Mm-hmm. So okay. D is uh, is often uh, used to replace the word the. That's why a lot of uh, black people mm-hmm. uh, have been taught songs mm-hmm. where. Word D is used instead of the. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the old black songs there. Uh, by the Mississippi there. The Mississippi. Yeah. 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 That kind of stuff. Hmm. So uh, if you look at Jerusalem, it's the Ruse Alem. Alem, the main translation of Alem is Elam, which is media. Mm. The capital city of the country called Media in Persia was called Elam. It was changed later to become Susa. Susa, or Kosu. And USA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but with that Sue, I, I noticed that he says it's in Jesus and it's in Zeus. Yeah, because an E can be an A, so USA or S-U-E is the same, mm-hmm. same word. Cold. Yeah. I, I, I noticed, too, because I've been this week, uh, uh, I've actually been just really trying to, I'm looking into, like, the history of Buddhism. Yeah, Alan and, uh, Watts. Alan, oh yeah, Alan Watts. <laughs> there is an Alan Watts. Yeah, I know. He's uh, like a Zen master or something like that. Yeah, he was. Uh, oh, you read his stuff? He was a specialist in in Buddhism. Which brand of it? There's like so many different sects now, but I, I think there's two Alan major. Alan Watts, born 1915, died 1973. English Buddhist scholar, one of the most influential 20th century century interpreters of Zen Buddhism to the West. Watts was born in Childshurst, England on January 6, 1915. Mm -hmm. His first book, The Spirit of Zen, was published in 1936. Mm -hmm. He came to the United States in 1939. He attended Seabury 
Western Theological Seminary and served as a priest in the Episcopal Church until 1950. He taught at several institutions of higher learning and wrote and lectured on Zen. His most influential book was The Way of Zen, written in 1957. Mm-hmm. Watts died in Mill Valley, California, on November 16, 1973. Right. Yes, when, when I was looking at, but Zen, Zen's like a Japanese form of a. Yeah. But, but when city I was looking. City Zen is mm-hmm. what you are when you live in a city. Uh, city, yeah, city Zen. Yeah, and. Yeah, when I was looked into it, like what's interesting, because it was all oral teachings yeah. originally, but as soon as they started writing them down, it, it, they wrote them down in a, a place called Sri Lanka around the same time of who Jesus Christ, yeah. and I seen that connection with the IRS, so I guess that was like the warning of like the IRS is coming or something. Yeah. Like that. Oh. IRS Paris. <laughs> Zen city Zens during the revolution. Yeah. The media citizen Kane in yeah. Hollywood, the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed too. Um, in that uh, uh, with the see, and I don't even know if the guy really existed. I don't, I really don't think he 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 might have. But when I was reading the book, like in the beginning, like. He had some good principles, some good, you know, truth. But as soon as he died, it was just like totally that's they just tore it all apart and just. That's why you can never have a democratic institution that is honest. Yeah. Because a democratic institution can be so easily taken over. Mm-hmm. So any institution that brings people together Mm -hmm. should be based upon the person bringing it together and die with him. Mm. If anybody wants to start another institution on similar principles after they should do that, but you take a political party, it's, it's basically against what is happening so they form a political party. You become a member by buying a card for five bucks. Well, they create the political party, and when it approaches power, mm-hmm. the other political party sends its membership over to buy a membership for five bucks each. They have the numbers of people they can overwhelm who's in the new party, take it over, and it then becomes their party. Democracy is a failed method of managing people because of the fact that the media manages the masses, and the masses take over parties on behalf of the media. Yeah. And that reminds me. Um, uh, and plus, democracy—it was, it was meant. It was not. It wasn't meant to, you know, help the people. It was just uh, on the on the surface, you know, it's, it's to keep the people, you know, quiet. But really, it was really another form of control. But uh, and it reminds me of a movie. Um, it's called Land of the Blind. Really, mm-hmm. pretty interesting movie. And then they show you how this country is run by a dictator. Um, he has a, he runs it with an iron fist. It's, he killed his own father. His father was the ruler, and then he killed his father, got in power. And then he uh, jails this political poet for being critical of the government and jails him. And then they beat this man all the time. And and the, the political poet is friends with a, a prison guard. And then after, you know, the, the guy gets out, uh, he convinces the prison guard, you know, to help him have a coup. And they take over. He takes over the government and kills the the rule. And the guy seemed genuine, but the, when he ruled it, he was even worse than the last rule. Yeah. <laughs> and he had people going to re-education camps, you know, sending, you know, brainwashing them and killing people. 
You got to remember though mm-hmm. that when they're making movies, mm-hmm. they are pitching a story they want pitched. Otherwise, you don't make the movie. Yeah. And much of the time, what it is is uh, reversed. It's like uh, uh, a Manchurian candidate. A guy wants to kill the president when the real story is the president wants to kill the people. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Like, it's a whole... You got to mirror a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you make the code. You mirror one letter against the other. Yeah, and with the Desdemona code, is that the only type of uh, uh, coding? Don't they have other ones, too? It's the main one. Oh, the main one. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and letters can be assembled up to eight together. Eight of the same letter. Mm. The letter Y, for example, when eight of them are put together, make a propeller. Mm. <laughs> All right. you got to have like a really uh, good imagination, too. Yeah. yeah. But, it, you know, today there are computers that can do that. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying to get someone to uh, run the program to, to make it. And I've had a number of people saying they were going to do it, and they go off to do it, and I never hear from them again. Mm. It's like they've discovered something you don't want to share. <laughs> yeah. Cause my, my computer is 20 years old. Yeah. And I don't change it. Because every time they improve the computer, it's not improved for you. It's improved for them. They are able to access it and cause you all kinds of trouble with the up-to-date computers much easier than with old computers and old software. So as long as my computer can do what I need, is basically act like a big typewriter. I don't need their highfalutin things that would allow them to shut me down permanently. They managed to shut me down temporarily on a number of occasions, but because it's old software, the viruses aren't made for people like me because there's not enough of us. They make viruses for the masses. Of course, at one time, there weren't enough Apple computers around that they didn't even make viruses for Apple because they, those were basically being used by their team. Now that a number of people buy apples because the word got out that they didn't have the same problems you had with PCs, They have made an Apple that can also do PC work. That means that now you have the programs in Apples that allow uh, PC viruses into the computer. Well, it seems like... Viruses and worms. Yeah, yeah. Because you get all that spyware and it just... It just opens like uh, it's just them spying in your computer. Sure, okay. I mean they're the ones who are making the viruses. Yeah, and then they sell you <laughs> spyware to catch their virus. Yeah, uh, like I, I, I know, it seems like when, since I've been going on your website and and research, I've been getting so many problems with my my laptop. I have a it's an old used laptop I got a few years yeah. ago, but it seems like I'm getting. I always get like problems with this thing. It's you know it's freezing up on me all the time. And yeah. Well, but, you know they'll they'll piggyback stuff onto the stuff they don't want people to be reading or yeah. passing on to other people. So you got to put aside a portion of your day to do cleanups, and and you have to learn how to do the cleanups, not by using their stuff, but by doing it yourself. Mm. Uh, that's a, yeah, with these, um, but yeah, um, you know, 
I, I've got to. I feel like it's so. It's, sometimes you feel like it's overwhelming. Sometimes. Well, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. For most people, they're not able to deal with this. Yeah. A few people uh, have been, for whatever reason, probably that they had a need other than this need, but the needs were the same. That they had to be nosy, <laughs> they had to be diggers, and they didn't take uh, anybody's word for granted. They always needed to double check things. So they they had to make people like that to keep their system in line. And it's among those people that people like you and I come from. Yeah, well, I feel like. I, I think I, I started making like not a lot, but I see it happening more. Like I'm probably making enemies. <laughs> People are starting to just like what, like what is this guy talking about? Like and uh, like I have one one guy, you know. I used to we used to you know, research a lot together and all that stuff, and he just like, well, wow, you're crazy. You're in a cult, and you know, and this guy knows about a lot of the system. And he's just like, you're crazy. You're in a cult. And because as I soon think... as they say that, mm -hmm. uh, I would start suspecting that person. Uh, because if he if he knows a lot of things, mm -hmm. then he would know that you don't have to be crazy to understand what's going on. You have to basically do a search. And since he has no answers mm -hmm. for what you're telling him, he then has to attack on a personal level. Yeah. So I, I would just uh, put that person aside and say he has an agenda, and I don't have time to waste with people yeah. with agendas. Yep. Uh, I'm surprised some, but there are other people uh, to, you know, that I've you know, shown your work to, and they, they're catching on quick, like, if you have the brain mm -hmm. that's made for this kind of stuff, yeah. it's not very difficult. Yeah. Once you catch on to the premise, mm -hmm. okay, what we're being told in school it's is lies. not the whole story. Yeah. And it's, it's basically trying to teach us something by ignoring much of the obvious things that are there. Mm -hmm. And that's basically like trying to teach how to build a skyscraper from the 10th floor up mm -hmm. until you learn what supports the building. You cannot basically learn anything. In school, they don't want to tell us what supports the building. How many times in, in my school, which was a bilingual French-English Catholic school, Mm -hmm. Did I turn to the teacher and say, what's, what's this four letters on the crucifix? Henry. Yeah, I used to wonder that too. And, and they would say, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> You're teaching us stuff. This is right in the middle of the most important symbol and you don't know? <laughs> Where do I find out? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I used to go to Catholic school too. Yeah, I think it was first through sixth grade. That was <laughs> that was an experience. Yeah. Huh? You know, um. Yeah, you know, they did the usual indoctrinations and everything. And I and now I think about it like. <laughs> They would how they would um interpret you know the bike, but I, I, I'm kind of glad though in a sense because because I, 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 I'm familiar with the Bible because of that like I'm familiar with certain things. Well, I went to Catholic school and they wouldn't even talk about the Bible. Wow, that was years before you. Oh wow! And it's only recently that the Bible has been allowed 
I mean, the Bible in our time was for Protestants. <laughs> we get the interpretation directly from the pulpit. Don't need to read the Bible. Yeah, we didn't read the Bible. You know what we did? We we read the books about the Bible. <laughs> not describe, but not straight from the Bible. But um, yeah. When I first started talking to you, um, at first it was like, you know, I was you know shocked and 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 it was really painful, man. Yeah. The painful part for me was um, uh, cause I used to think, okay, yeah, you know, there's something else, you know, you know how we. What we were, uh, you know, we came from somewhere, you know. I think, you know, then you're like, no, you were genetically engineered, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it was that that was really like hard for me. Yeah, because I don't have time to listen to a story I already know. Yeah, <laughs> and and I have to cut it short, uh, and and that's happened to me a number of times. I've given talks. Uh, Remember one time in uh, Vancouver when I was giving a talk with a couple of hundred people there, mm-hmm. and at the end of question period, there was a guy that that got up and and sort of argued with me, but he didn't want to go too far because the people in the audience were booing him every time he tried to uh, to attack me personally. About three months, four months later, I get a phone call, and it's this guy, and he said, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I hated you that night <laughs> in <laughs> Vancouver. I hated what you were saying. I hated you. But he said, since then, I've been thinking about what you said. It makes perfect sense to me now. I want to apologize. <laughs> And that's happened in different variations, probably you know, ten or fifteen times. When when was your last seminar? When you had those seminars? Uh, the last seminar I gave was um, at the Ottawa Public Library. Well, I guess it wasn't at the Ottawa Public Library. It was probably a public seminar in Sundridge, Ontario, on my way back from out west. Hmm. I gave seminars all the way across Canada. I remember the last trip that I took. I had a guy who was a former teacher who worked for external affairs, Mm -hmm. who was a bookworm. Uh, He kept coming to meetings that I used to go uh, called Citizens Against Bad Law. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to go there to tell him that there is no bad law. Uh, it's a bad interpretation of laws that's the problem. In any event, this guy um, invited me to his place once, and he lived in a big house, old house, and you open the door, and there was just enough room to move sideways. In the entire house, it was filled with books. And he had a little hole in what used to be the front room Mm -hmm. where he would sit on a hard chair reading. The rest of the house, you could barely walk. Uh. (laughs) And um, he got uh, a car given to him because somebody died in the family. I forget what it was, his daughter or something like that. And he said, if you need a car, I'll give you my other one, the one he had, which was about a 10 or 15-year-old small Ford. And uh, I said, good, I'm I'm going to go on a trip across the country. Mm-hmm. And um, 
that'll give me a car. Then I I met another guy who lived in Rockcliffe Park in Ottawa, whose family was very wealthy. He wasn't particularly wealthy nor poor. He was average. Mm-hmm. But he was going to inherit some money. And part of the things that he had in his life before he, he was married was uh, Chrysler that he used to tow his boat from Ottawa to Florida. Mm-hmm. He looked at me one day saying, are you crazy? You're going to go on a national uh, tour in this Ford. It probably won't make it to the city limits without falling apart. Uh, if you want, I'll sell you for $2 my Chrysler. And it, it was about 15 years old. I said, I can't own a car, but I can put it in the Institute's name, but I don't have the money for insurance. That's when Ann said that she would pay for the insurance. So I started on a trip to go across Canada with what I consider to be the only things that I own. And Anne would meet me if I got to Vancouver, British Columbia. If I didn't, I don't know what would have happened. Hmm. But I drove, I left from Ottawa with the insurance on the car, the license plates on the car, uh, something like $26 in my pocket, Um and a sandwich. Hmm. And I drove to a place called Peterborough. And in Peterborough, there was a guy that had heard about me um, filing charges in Ottawa and getting charges against all those senators and cabinet ministers. And he said, I got to hold a meeting. So he brought together about 60 people, I guess. At the end, they passed the hat. I think I got something like 300 bucks. Mm. Then I went on uh, to uh, Oshawa, I think it was, and held a meeting there. Then I had a meeting in uh, northern Ontario, Sault Ste. Marie, someplace, and another meeting in Winnipeg. And uh, along the way, I had to get repairs done on the car. And anyways, to make a long story short, I had traveled uh, 3,000 miles when I got to where I was going in B.C. And I had spent $2,000 on gas and oil Mm -hmm. and repairs and I had about eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars in cash just from passing hat at the end of the meeting. So when did you like? So when you when did you start like giving those seminars like ten years ago? Or? Well, I was always uh, in sales business. And I was always giving seminars in sale. Mm -hmm. But to give seminars on this kind of activity, um, I began in 1987. 1987 was the year that um, I stopped work. My partners tried to steal the project that I was putting together. Yeah, I think I've seen a book. With you. you were like an architect, too? Well, no. I was uh, a developer. Mm. I had an architect working for me, mm-hmm. and uh, 
uh, together we got bridge financing from uh, financiers in Montreal. One of them was an auditor, and the other one was uh, a guy who owned uh, clothing manufacturing business during World War II and had retired with a lot of money. He, he had uh, got control over zippers. Nobody could get zippers in World War II except from him. Right. Um, he made a fortune, and he had, you know, uh, uh, probably about twenty million bucks. I don't know the exact amount, but he had about twenty million bucks. And uh, he agreed to invest four hundred thousand dollars on searching for financing for this project that I had in mind. We raised um, $147 million from a uh, pension fund mm -hmm. in the province of Quebec. Police, bus drivers, teachers, the uh, project was going to go ahead on a piece of property that I had to acquire and and had a school on it and the parents wouldn't sell it because it, it was downtown I'm on the phone Tom I was down it was in downtown and they were afraid that no school would be built there so I made a deal with the parents that I would buy the school for another school just show me the lot you want to put it on, and I'll build a school there. So out of the um, advance financing for the project, that's what we did, spent three and a half, four million dollars to build a school, moved the people out, then got the land ready, only to find out that my partners were trying to take control of the entire project at that point. The project died basically because I refused to allow them. Went to court, I won. But by then, the financiers, the pension fund, withdrew. And Bell Canada bought the land from, from my partners. And I wouldn't sign off, and they couldn't sell. But at one stage of the game, I said, okay, if you uh, reimburse all the people that have worked on the project and don't leave anybody uh, bankrupt, uh, I'll sign off. And I did. Mm -hmm. They gave the money to a lawyer. Everybody was paid. Uh, I walked away with nothing. But I walked away with a sense that this is a story that I have to search. And while I'm searching, people were asking me questions, so I would hold meetings and explain how the politicians were really involved in graft and corruption. In any event, I'm being called for supper. Mm. So i got to go. All right. Speak to you again some other time. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye.